Damn, it's bright out here, isn't it? It's oh, so my God. bright. Oh my well, God. here we are in Philadelphia. Uh, we're in Washington Square Park, one of my very favorite places to shoot. The reason being that this park, unlike most cities in our country, uh, we have some buildings that are rather low, and we don't have these enormous skyscrapers that surround this area. And what we're able to get here is various patches of light throughout mm -hmm. the day. Uh, that's really my reason to, to choose to shoot here as often as I do. Um, right now, uh, we're here to prove that we can shoot at high noon. I mean, it is, I think it's like five minutes to 12 or something yeah. like that. And every, this park is bustling with people for lunch. Um, and right now, I can barely see it's so darn bright. You can see the shadows on Sarah's face. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to take Sarah, our model here, uh, and we're going to put her in a spot that I'm going to find in a second that I feel is going to be great. Uh, the key to what I'm going to do and the key to shooting in harsh light, here's the formula. Keeping your subject between you and the light source. In this case, it's our sun, obviously. What I'm going to do in a second, Adam's going to kind of follow me around and I'm going to look for a great spot. I've already seen it. I, I can see it from here, but I'm going to teach you how to sort it out. So why don't you follow me, Adam, why don't you follow me? And what I'm going to be looking for right now, first and foremost, is where our sun is. And man, oh, it's, right it's pretty hot. Yeah. Um, so we have to find our light source. We found it. The other thing that I'm going to be looking for is areas off in the distance that I can juxtapose Sarah against something dark. If I can do that, I'm going to make some stunning images. So already in this vicinity, I saw it as soon as I walked in. And there are several areas in this park I can do it with. But I saw this light patch over here where I can put the sun to Sarah's back. So one of the things uh, you may have noticed about the light on Sarah's face before is that it was very, very hot. Now she's in shadow. Watch what happens. Sarah, come with me. As soon as she comes out into this light, you're going to see just the veil light up. Keep walking the other way now, Sarah. I mean, that to me is beautiful already. And now, Sarah, come in this area and just turn and face me. Good. We're going to put your son, so, uh, your, your uh, back to the light right now. I can shoot. The key to shooting in this harsh light right now, number one, I want to expose for the face properly. How am I going to do it? Well, manual or aperture priority? <laughs> the answer is yes. You can use both. If I was in aperture priority, as I discussed in my Essentials of Creativity class, I'm going to judge the overall scene. And if I think that the overall scene is darker compared to the face, then I'm going to take my exposure comp dial and I'm going to dial it under. I might start out at 7 tenths under. That's assuming that I was shooting Sarah, Sarah's face, and the darker areas behind her in the frame. However, let's say I wanted to get some of this grass that's kind of blown out. Then, dialing under exposure compensation may not work. What I might do in this situation, which is what I'm going to do, is start somewhere in manual and get myself an exposure value. Why aren't I using uh, aperture priority here? Because the meter is going to get fooled and it's going to be all over the place. It all depends upon what's within the frame and what the camera is seeing. That's what's going to determine the exposure value in aperture priority. This is where manual exposure mode will be superior. So what I'm going to do now, I have my 70 to 200, my primary lens for shooting my bride. And what we're going to do is sort of uh, fake it a little bit. At 2 o'clock, we're going to have the couple seeing one another for the first time. But right now, at high noon, I'm going to show you that I can make pictures here. We can already see that the light is very even on Sarah's face. But if we did this right there, you can see this nasty, harsh hot spots that come on Sarah's face. And once we do that, we keep the subjects 
back to the sun. We keep the subject between me and the light source. We can make pictures at any time of day, including 12 noon. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna make a couple snaps. I'm in manual exposure value mode. All right, I'm gonna get a, a reading here. Let's see where we need to be. Ah, oh, I pretty much nailed it on the first one. I like to shoot wide open. I shoot wide open at 2.8, especially for images like this, mainly because I like a nice blurred background. Um, this is a phenomenal lens. This is a Nikkor 7200 VR2 lens. I've got it wide open at 2.8. I'm in manual mode. ISO, as slow as I can go. Why? Because I like the highest quality that I can start with. And in this light, heck, I can go down to 100 if I wanted to. 200 is a good start. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna take a few. And Sarah, you can just kind of do your thing. In a little while, we're gonna make it more real with her, uh, her boyfriend, Sammy, coming behind her to pretend it's a bride and groom seeing each other for the first time. But right now, I'm making picture after picture after picture. My exposure value is 640 at 2.8. You can accomplish basically the same thing by taking a spot meter right off of Sarah's face. You might ask, well, why didn't you do that to begin with? Well, I don't need to. Some of you might. Some of you might think it's a better idea. It's a perfectly acceptable method of metering. For me, I knew where I needed to start, and I was only about a third of a stop off to begin with. I started at a 500th of a second at 2.8. So I'm making picture after picture. In a little while, what's gonna happen, at two o'clock, we're gonna have Sammy basically come up behind her and show you how I have couples seeing each other for the first time. But right now, Sarah's gonna pretend that Sammy's coming somewhere. So Sarah, what I'd like you to do, and I'm gonna give some Sarah some instructions here. I would go up to Sarah and I would say this. Um, in a few minutes, you're gonna see your groom for the first time, okay? I want you to just relax. I want you to keep yourself in the moment. I want you to let your emotions go. There's nobody else here. It's just you and Sammy. Gotcha. I'm not sure exactly where he's coming from. That's a blatant lie. But I'm gonna let you know, he's probably gonna be coming from that direction there, so I want you to stay focused there, all right? In actuality, what I'm gonna have Sammy do Sammy's gonna come behind her at two o'clock. But right now, really what I'm trying to say is, you don't have to be afraid no matter what time of day it is. You don't have to say anymore, um, Mrs. Smith, I, 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 you know, you don't have to find open shade. You don't have to tell Mrs. Smith, the bride's mom, that you don't wanna shoot in the park or on the beach or anywhere else at 12 noon. It is 12 noon right now. Couple things about this that make this image a compelling image. The beautiful highlights of the veil, we're gonna lose those a little bit. Once again, I'd like to reiterate how evenly lit her face is. This is because we follow the golden rule of keeping our subject between me or you and the light source. In this case, we've got that bright sun. It is 12 o'clock. You might say to yourself, well, that sun is still on an angle. Well, guess what? We're not on the equator. And if it's not June 21st, the sun is not going to be directly overhead. So you can use the light and you can put it behind your subject and you can keep your subject between you and the light source unless you're living in, where are you from, Ecuador? Ecuador. Unless you're in Ecuador, okay, which is close to the equator, yes. is it not? That would be a little different. We'll do another class there sometime. But right now, Sarah, you just be yourself. You're gonna pretend to wait for Sammy and I'm just gonna make some pictures and I'm gonna prove to you that we can make some beautiful images in this difficult lighting condition. I don't think it's difficult, I think it's beautiful. So here, I'm gonna take some photos. All I'm trying to do right now is just let her be. If you notice that I'm a great distance from her. I use this lens for a couple reasons. Compression, as well as isolation. And I'm able to keep her within the realm of the composition that I'm looking for. If I'm shooting wide, I'm gonna get all this brightness from the, from the grass, and I'm not gonna compose the images the way I'd, way I'd like. 
I'm compressing and I'm composing. So here I go. She's just chilling out and she's looking everywhere but me sometimes. Now, if you notice, I'm firing away because I'm in manual exposure and I've got my exposures. So I can just keep shooting. I can wait, I can time it. I'm making some killer pictures. That's the key right here, 12 noon. The subject between me and the sun, isolate with a long lens and you're gonna be rewarded with some killer pictures and then you're gonna have some confidence to shoot at high noon.